Hello, and welcome to the Peterson Workshop made possible by Omaze. I'm your host, Ron Baugh, and today we're gonna to answer the question, what is a car? Let's think about all the different ways you can travel from place to place. What types of transportation do you use in your day-to-day -day life? You can walk. Walking is the original form of transportation. You don't need any technology, just your own two feet. You can take a boat if you're near water. Boats can come in all shapes and sizes. You can fly in a plane if you have to travel really far. Planes allow you to travel over land and water very quickly. In some places, with difficult terrain, you can use pack animals like llamas, donkeys, camels, even elephants. Some people like to use transportation that requires physical movement like bicycles, skateboards, and scooters. Think about the world around you and imagine stepping out of your house and onto the road. What types of transportation do you see the most? You might have been thinking about cars. We use cars to get around our neighborhoods and cities quickly and easily. Cars get you places faster than walking or biking and are better for shorter distances than flying. But cars look very different than other forms of transportation. Have you ever wondered what makes a car a car? Well, today, that's what we're gonna explore. So what is a car? What sets a car apart from other forms of transportation? Well, to answer this question, we need to explore the parts of the car. Imagine a car in your mind. You probably thought about a specific shape. The part of the car that gives it its shape is the body. Cars can take many different shapes and have throughout the decades. Some are sports cars, usually a two-seater, and smaller than other cars to be able to move quickly. Some are sedans, which are four-door vehicles that can easily fit a family. Some are larger, like SUVs or vans, that can fit lots of people or supplies. And some are trucks that can carry a large load in the back. So the body of the car gives it its shape, but does it make it a car? Well, let's take a look at this early car. Does it look like a car to you? Does it have any of the body shapes we just saw? This early car is missing a roof, doors, and windows. It doesn't have the same body shape that we had before, and that's because when we first started building cars, we didn't know what they should look like. So we used what we already had, which were horse-drawn carriages. But just because it doesn't look like a car doesn't mean it isn't one. So does the body of the car determine whether something is a car or not? No. It helps us to distinguish between types of cars, but doesn't make something a car. Okay, so what other parts of the car are there? Maybe we can get closer to narrowing down what makes a car a car. On the body of the car are the headlights and the taillights. What do you think the lights do? The headlights allow the driver to see in the dark. Taillights allow other drivers to see another car in the dark and to see when the car in front of them is braking. Why do you think these lights are important? The lights keep us safe by allowing us to see in front of us while driving in the dark and help us to know when other cars stop. Why do you think these lights are important? The lights keep us safe by allowing us to see in front of us while driving in the dark and to help us to know when to stop our cars. Many of the features that we see on cars today have been added due to safety concerns. Early headlights were gasoline-powered lanterns. You would light them like a candle. Can you think of any reason why this was a bad idea? That's right, the lights would often blow out and leave the driver in the dark. The light was unsteady because it was a flame, and if it rained or there was a slight breeze, the flame would shift or go out. Over time, due to safety concerns, the headlights were replaced with electric lights to ensure that light was steady and never went out. Okay, so we've established that the lights on a car are important, but do lights make a car a car? Well, let's think about it. Do trains have lights? Do airplanes? Do bicycles? Many other forms of transportation also have lights, so the lights do not make a car a car. Next, let's look at the windshield. What does a windshield do? Well, if we break the word apart, we can figure out what a windshield does. So first we have wind. Wind is the perception of air blowing following a current. So you feel wind blowing on your face as you run or move quickly. Then you have shield. A shield is used as protection against blows. So when we take those two parts and put them together, you have protection against wind blowing. So what does the windshield do? It protects against wind blowing in the driver's face. Early cars didn't have a windshield. Why do you think this is? Imagine the car we saw earlier. Do you think that car would be able to travel quickly? No. Early cars drove rather slowly, actually. Do you think that cars that drive slowly need protection against wind? Well, we can test this out at home right now. Try walking slowly in a straight line. Did you feel a breeze on your face? Okay, now try running in a straight line. Did you feel a breeze this time? When you move slowly, you didn't feel a breeze in your face, but once you started moving faster, you could feel the wind in your face. It's the same with cars. The early cars that moved rather slowly didn't require a windshield because they didn't move fast enough to generate much of a breeze. However, drivers were still concerned with having protections against wind, dirt, and bugs, so much so that they wore driving outfits complete with hats, robes, goggles, and gloves to protect their clothing. This desire to have protection from the weather, 
wind, dirt, and bugs led to several additions to the body of the car, including a roof, doors, and the windshield. And while the driver was finally protected from the weather, the addition of the windshield only created a new problem. When the windshield was first added to the car, there was no way to clean the glass and no way to remove water in the instance there was rain. Mary Anderson first noticed this problem while riding the bus in the rain. She watched the driver stick his head out of the window of the bus in order to see where he was driving. She invented a small wiper that was attached to the windshield and was controlled by the driver. This way, the driver could manually clear the windshield during a rainstorm. Eventually, the windshield wiper would be standard on all cars and would even be automatic so the driver didn't have to remember to clean the windshield themselves. I think we can all agree that the windshield and the windshield wipers were important additions to the car. But can you think of any other forms of transportation that require a windshield? Well, if we go by our experiment before, it would be the forms of transportation that move quickly, like trains and planes. By this reasoning, the windshield is not required to make something a car. If we look at the interior of a car, we can think of a lot of parts of the car that are there to make our ride comfortable, like the seats or the cup holders. Can you think of the part of the car that is used to control its movement? The steering wheel is a system of controls that is manipulated by the driver. This means that when the driver turns the steering wheel, the tires respond and turn that direction as well. Through this, the driver controls the movement of the car. We didn't always have steering wheels. Remember that early car? Well, that car was controlled using a tiller. Can you say tiller? A tiller is a lever that is used to steer. Usually a tiller is found on boats and is used to turn a boat side to side. Do you think the tiller allows for a large range of motion? Definitely not. Boats don't need to turn very quickly, and so the tiller works, but for cars, the tiller doesn't work as well because cars need to be able to turn quickly. Almost every form of transportation has a control system to steer the vehicle. It may not be a steering wheel, but every system of transport needs to be able to control their movement. Think about when you ride your bike. You can turn the handlebars and the bike will follow. Due to this, the steering wheel is not essential to make a car a car. The steering wheel controls the wheels. How many wheels does a car usually have? Usually a car has four wheels. The very first car, the Benz Patton motor wagon, only had three wheels though. Remember we said when we first started building cars, we had no idea what cars should look like, so we used the other forms of transportation we were familiar with. What does this car look like to you? Perhaps you thought of a bike or a carriage. You would be right on both counts. The wheels are very similar to early bicycle tires. These are metal wheels with strips of rubber on the outside. These large wheels worked especially well on our early roads. Our early roads were simply dirt trails that had been widened to allow carriages and wagons to pass through. The large wheels allowed the cars to pass through the mud and over the rough terrain. Eventually, our roads were paved over, and as they improved, the tires on our cars improved as well. Pneumatic tires were introduced. These are rubber tires filled with air. Pneumatic tires allow for a smoother ride because they can shift with changing terrain. Let's say you're driving on a rough road. Let's say you're driving on a smooth road, but you run into a patch filled with rocks. Normally, you would feel each rock as you drive over them, but with pneumatic tires, the tire will absorb some of the shock from hitting the rock. This means you won't feel the bump as much as you continue driving. Wheels are incredibly important on the car. They're the reason the car can drive, but they're not the only form of transportation that uses wheels. Can you think of any others? Well, we already saw that bicycles helped inspire the early car. So bicycles use wheels. So do trains and planes. Trains have wheels that run along the tracks. Planes have wheels to help them move along the runway at the airport. Since all of these other forms of transportation also have wheels, it reasons that wheels do not make a car a car. Okay. So we've been through almost every part of the car, and so far none of them have been essential to making a car a car. There's one important part of the car that we've missed so far. Can you think of it? I'll give you a hint. It's the part of the car that makes it move. Do you have it? That's right, it's the engine. The engine of the car is like our heart. We all have hearts inside of our chest. They pump blood through our bodies and keep us alive and moving. We eat food that fuels us and gives us energy to move. When we start moving like when we ran earlier, our hearts start pumping faster to allow us to move faster. The engine is similar. We feed our cars gasoline or fuel and it runs to the engine. The engine has pumps inside of it called pistons that pump up and down and cause the wheels to spin. When there's more gasoline in the engine, the engine moves faster and causes the car to go faster. You can test this out at home. Place your hand over your heart and see if you can feel how fast it is beating. Then try running in place for 10 seconds. After you stop, put your hand on your heart. Did you get your heart to beat faster? If not, you may have to start over again. The engine is a part of the car that makes it a car. It's in the name, automobile. Cars are often referred to as automobiles. Let's break that word down further. First you have auto. Auto means self. 
And this refers to the object. So for instance, when I say myself, I'm referring to my person alone. Then you have the word mobile. If something is mobile, then it is able to move. So if we put them together, you get self mobile, which means that the car is able to move on its own. What this means is that the car is different from a bicycle or a carriage because a bicycle or a carriage cannot move on their own. The bicycle has to be pedaled and a carriage is pulled by animals such as a horse. A car does not have to be pedaled or pulled by an animal. The engine allows the car to move on its own. This is how we know something is a car. Remember that early car we've been looking at? We said that it looked like a carriage, but it's actually a car. How do we know that it was a car? Because it had an engine. It was able to move on its own without a person or animal pushing or pulling. it. So next time you're looking at different forms of transportation, ask yourself if it is able to move on its own. If it is, chances are it's a car. All of the other parts we've looked at are still important. Those parts help make the car safe and comfortable to drive. They often help to give the car style and change its look. Think about the cars you've seen on the road. Were they all the same or was every car a little different? The cars we see on the road may all look different, but the important thing is that they all have engines that allow them to drive on their own. Now you have a chance to make your own car costume, and the best part is you already know all of the parts to add to your car. This costume is made using materials that you can find at home. The main body of the costume is made out of a cardboard box. Find a box that you can fit around your body and give you some room to decorate. The other materials you'll need are listed on the screen. Now we can look at the steps of how to build and design your car costume. First, we need to make the shape of your car costume. This part is really up to you on how you want it to look, but I'm gonna cut all the flaps off of the box so that I just have the main structure of the box left. I'm gonna leave the front and back flap on one side so that I can make a windshield and a tail flap. If you're gonna use scissors to cut your box, please ask for an adult's help. So after cutting the flaps off, I have the main shape of my car costume, which is very boxy. How often do we see boxy cars on the road? Do you think square is a good shape for a car? Think about the body shapes we saw throughout our video. Now think about the type of car you want to design. You can add extra cardboard onto the body in order to create the design that you want. In addition to the shape, we also need to make a windshield. We learned how important the windshield is on the car. In order to create your windshield, you can fold one of the flaps and hot glue the corners of the flap to the side of the box. It creates a triangle at the front of the box. Shape is just one aspect of the car. Another important feature of a car is the color. As we already saw, cars can have many different purposes and the color can change based on how the car will be used. Some of the earliest cars weren't even painted or were painted one color like black or gray. With the Ford Model T, it was the first car to be mass produced, which means that they made a lot of them in a very short period of time. Ford at one point said that you could have his car in any color as long as it was black. This was because he wanted to produce the cars very quickly, so he only allowed one color of paint. So color became an indicator of how much money you could spend on a car. Some of the luxury vehicles in the 1920s and 30s had very bright paint with multiple colors. Have you ever seen a car with multiple colors on the body? As racing became more common internationally, more countries around the world participated and color came to indicate which country the car was from. It was a very clear way to see which country was winning. So Great Britain was green, Egypt was purple, Germany was silver, Italy was red, and the United States was white and blue. This is why you often see red Ferraris because Ferrari is from Italy. So think about what kind of car you want to drive. Is it an everyday driver, a luxury art car, a race car? That decision will affect what color you choose for your car. You can paint it any color you'd like. Now that you have the basic shape and the color of your car, we can start adding important safety features to your car. Can you remember some of the safety features we covered in the video? One of those safety features was the windshield and the windshield wipers. You can make the windshield wipers out of pipe cleaners. You'll need one pipe cleaner to wrap around the front of the box so that you can attach your windshield wipers. Then you can cut the other pipe cleaner in half and twist one end around the pipe cleaner on the box so that it sits against the windshield. Do the same with the next pipe cleaner and now you have a set of windshield wipers. You're ready to drive in the rain. Cars need a set of wheels to drive on. How many wheels do our cars usually have? That's right, our cars usually have four wheels. So in order to add the wheels to your car, you wanna punch four holes using the hole punch into the bottom of your box, two on each side. Then color your paper plates to look like wheels and use the hole punch to punch a hole in the paper plates. Then you just attach the wheels with brads. Let's look at the fifth wheel on the car, the steering wheel. What does the steering wheel do? That's right, it steers the car. This is a very important part of the car and it's necessary on your car costume. So we're going to use another paper plate to create a steering wheel. Take your paper plate and cut out three triangles to create the handholds on the steering wheel. 
punch a hole in the cardboard you use to create your windshield. Use a brad to attach the steering wheel to the back of the windshield so that you can steer your car. The last part we're gonna to add to our car is our headlights and taillights. Why would lights be important on a car? They help us to be able to see at night. In order to add headlights to your car, you need some paper cups. I recommend cutting down the paper cups so that they don't stick out so much from your car. Then punch a hole in the cup and the cardboard and attach the light with a brad. Then you can cover the top of the cup with some tissue paper or construction paper to make the different colors of lights. The final step is to add suspenders so that you can wear the costume. You just need to punch four holes in the four corners of the box and attach yarn or string so that you can create suspenders that you'll wear over your shoulder. We've added all the parts of our car except we're forgetting the one part that actually makes a car a car. Does anyone remember what part is essential? The engine. In this car, you are the engine. So go ahead and jump in your car and you're ready to head off to the races. Now that we've answered the question, what is a car? Thank you for joining us for the Peterson Workshop made possible by Amaze with me, Ron Baugh.